Tune into Nice Radio every Saturday at 7:30 a.m. for A View from the Outside, hosted by Brayton Horn. A View from the Outside takes a look at key issues affecting St. Vincent and the Grenadines and gives a global perspective on how these issues are viewed. Host Brayton Horn will examine a variety of topics to enlighten, stimulate debate, and explore solutions. Hear the facts, hear the real life stories, hear a view from the outside. Join Brayton Horn at 7:30 a.m. every Saturday on Nice Radio for a view from the outside. On a view from the outside this week. This week being the 8th of January 2022, we look at reform, R-E-F-O-R-M, reform, with the view being that the recent outrage and outcry surrounding the case of the man who videotaped a four-year-old girl to whom he's very closely related to perform fellatio on him and of what is described as a wholly inadequate sentence that he received, it is clear that there is an urgent need for reform of the laws governing sexual offenses in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Longman Dictionary defines reform as to improve a system, law, organization, etc., by making a lot of changes to it so that it operates in a fairer and more effective way. That definition tells us that when something is in need of reform, that thing needs to change. When something is in need of reform, that thing needs to improve. When something is in need of reform, that thing needs to be fairer. When something is in need of reform, that thing is not working, and therefore it needs to be changed to be more effective. It is with that explanation in mind, and with the public outrage and outcry in the country, why we, here on a view from the outside, deal with this topic today. Over the last week, the conversation in the country has been dominated by the call for a change in the laws to allow for stiffer penalties on those convicted of the type of crime to which the 35-year-old man had pleaded guilty. It is reported that the conversation on reform extended throughout the Caribbean and the rest of the Vincentian diaspora, including the United States of America and Canada and the United Kingdom. The man reportedly pleaded guilty to two counts of indecent assault on the four-year-old, one between the 31st of December 2019 and the 1st of January 2021, and the other on the 29th of December 2021, when he is said to have recorded the child performing fellatio on him. He is reported to have received a total sentence of four years imprisonment. There was utter outrage when the video initially surfaced, and the outrage intensified when the man was sentenced the general feeling is clear, and many people have exclaimed that the sentence does not remotely resemble the crime. The call grew louder for reform, reform of the sexual offences laws in the country, particularly to include stiffer penalties, to make the system fairer and just, especially to protect young and vulnerable victims. Many people are baffled and question the rush to take the case to court without what seems like a thorough investigation. It appears to many that in the haste to give the appearance of quick justice, many wounds have opened up 
and many questions are being asked. It is noticeable that whilst the rest of the country and beyond are sounding the call for reform in that area of the law, the regime seems to have put on blindfolds and put up a wall of silence on the issue. They seem to be unwilling to entertain any discussion on it. Many people are raising their eyebrows and questioning the regime's reluctance. Speculation is rife as to why the regime remains hesitant or unwilling altogether to such reform. Why are they so silent? After all, they have been in power for the last 20 plus years, and they have the majority in Parliament to bring about a change in the law. They clearly lack the will to do so. Their reluctance must be viewed against the backdrop that it is a regime that has been in power in the country for the last 20 plus years, and that if they had or have the interest and the will to reform the sexual offences laws in the country, they will have done so already. This, of course, is a regime which is not averse or shy to interfere with the laws of the country. They have done so on numerous occasions, many people say, to suit their own ends and interest, and not for the overall benefit of the country and its people. They have been deemed by the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal to use the constitution of the country as a sword against the citizens of the state. They have repeatedly browbeat, suppressed and oppressed the people. If they have the interest and the will to bring about reform to the sexual offences laws of the country, they will certainly have done so already. This is a regime which abolished the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, PACE. That piece of legislation which regulated the behavior of the police during an investigation and was meant to hold the police accountable. To whose benefit, one may ask, why peace was abolished? Well, it is widely believed that since the abolition of peace, the police have been acting wantonly on behalf of the regime. So, it seems that the regime interferes with the law of the country when it suits them. This is the regime which was not hesitant or unwilling to interfere with the immigration laws of the country. One would remember that soon after officials were involved in passport skullduggery in the embassy in New York, the regime amended the Passport Act to retroactively protect those who fell foul of the law. So, they interfere with the laws of the country when it suits them. This is a regime which in the face of protests locally and from 22 regional and international organizations introduced the Cybercrime Act to broaden the law on criminal defamation. Many say to try to curb the dissemination of material connected to those in the regime who engage in lewd and lascivious conduct and other indecent behavior. This is a regime which conducts parliament in the dead of night and in the wee hours of the morning to pass legislation believed to punish the Vincentian people. There was the Grenadines tax, commonly referred to as the $1 tax, a piece of legislation which many believed was introduced to punish the people of the Grenadines for not having supported the regime over the years. 
Most recently, they stayed up until the wee hours of the morning and amended the Public Health Act to ensure that they made it mandatory for teachers, nurses, and police officers and other public servants to take the COVID-19 vaccine or lose their jobs, or as others prefer to say, be fired from their jobs. Many of those frontline workers have since lost their jobs. They have since been fired from their jobs as a result. Many of them and their families have had a miserable Christmas. Many of them continue to exist with poor mental health, not knowing how they're going to feed their families and send their children to school. So it is clear that by comparing many examples when the regime interfered with the laws of the country, that they are afraid, hesitant, or unwilling altogether to reform the sexual offenses laws of the country. It now remains up to you, the people, to ensure that your outcry and your outrage are registered with the regime. It is up to you, the people, to speak up and speak out and demand reform. Contact your MPs, email them, text them, WhatsApp them, telephone and bombard them and demand change. It is up to you, the people, to decry the Christian council and those churches which many say remain silent in the face of such egregious acts being perpetrated against the young and vulnerable in the country. Call them out for what is a dereliction of their responsibility for being the social conscience of the nation. It is worthy to note that governments do respond to public outrage and outcry and change laws, sexual offenses laws, to assuage the public's dissatisfaction. When the Social Offences Act 2003 was introduced in England and Wales, it was because of public outrage, which was brought about because of sentences which were said to be too lenient for convicted pedophiles. That act introduced harsher sentences for convicted sex offenders. It also introduced provisions to tackle sex trafficking and pedophiles' grooming of children. It is interesting to note that that 2003 Act is now said to be in need of further reform. Vincentians, we, here on a view from the outside, say that reform of the sexual offences laws in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is urgently needed. Action for reform is needed and needed now. The regime needs to break their silence on the issue. If they cannot effect the changes to protect the most vulnerable in society, then they must be made to make a way for those who have the interest, will, and determination to do so. Vincentians, take your destiny in your own hands and ensure that the future of the nation and that of the nation's children is protected. We leave you with the words which were used to describe the coming into force of the Sexual Offences Act 2003 in England and Wales. This is what was said, and I quote, The substantial reform of the law on sex offences was designed to reflect changes in social attitudes. The government expressed the belief that the existing laws, including rape, were out of date and the act was designed to reform rape laws 
and to offer greater protection to the children and vulnerable adults. Reform is needed in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Reform of the sexual offences laws. Until next week, Justin and all the listeners, this is Britton Horn with a reminder to send your feedback as usual to a view from the outside at hotmail.com. We also invite you to visit and like our Facebook page at A View From The Outside and to subscribe to our YouTube channel at JMB Horn. Have a pleasant Saturday. Have a wonderful Sunday and have a productive week ahead with everyone demanding reform to the sexual offences laws in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. All the best to you, Justin. and.